So for those of you who haven't met me before, I'm Edward. While the presentation is getting set up, uh, my full name is actually Edward Apostle. I'm a developer. I'm also an instructor. I teach a number of programming languages for a number of different companies. Uh, for example, I last taught at Red Academy, which is one of the boot camp schools over at uh, King and Spadina. Um, I also uh, am currently actually doing some freelance work for a number of travel-based web agencies, uh, working in Python with Django as a management system, and this little VM that I'm trying to deal with, with some React code in the front end. I've been in the industry for a long time, um, so I actually have uh, quite a bit of uh, an acknowledgement to what Jen was saying before uh, about being healthy in this industry. I had uh, worked uh, since the dot-com boom uh, started, um, and actually I'm Matt from uh, FITC experience as well, um, having been a past speaker there, and I have also was an MC there. Uh, and Actually, I did a stint uh, becoming a yoga teacher uh, because if you sit there like this too long in the industry, your back starts to really go out of whack. So I decided to do a little detour back in 2010 and become a yoga teacher. So I decided to jump ship and go back into this programming thing. So I still, I still do a little bit of mobile stuff. I still do a little bit of web stuff. Uh, and now that I have some folks again, uh, let's talk about this. Um, this is actually uh, another iteration of a presentation that I did a long time ago, well, actually back in June 2017, uh, to a group who primarily represent uh, Facebook developers. Uh, and this was at Red Academy. And as I said, I've been playing with uh, JavaScript technology since basically it had been born. Um, I've been watching it grow since I typed Mocha script in the Chrome, or it's not even Chrome, it's Netscape. Back in the day, I typed in Mocha script, and then this little dialog box allowed me to type in things that said hello. But um, also during that time when I started, I uh, also started to take a look at uh, other ways that I can have fun with technology. So um, some of you, of course, might be familiar with 3D glasses. Uh, these were the classic ones uh, that I kind of grew up with when I was really young, the classic red and blue uh, glasses. And, uh, you know, they had those kind of movies that came out, uh, mostly science fiction. Um, and in my research into virtual reality, I discovered that this little box, well, this little box wasn't little, it was actually like about twice the size of an arcade machine that you might see in an arcade. Um, this was the Sensorama. It had 3D, it had vision, it had motion, it had color, it had all sorts, of, it even had aromas. So that kind of stuff, the aroma part, might still be a little bit technologically challenging uh, in the current web, but uh, it also apparently had wind. I'm not sure if wind and aromas had anything to in common together, but uh, it's a very interesting construct. Um, most of you might be familiar with the head mounted displays. You might have seen me floating around with this, just kind of giving it a shot. That was the very first head mounted display, uh, I believe. Uh, in the 50s, and this, oh, lost my slide there, going forward there, let's see what we have, oh, there we go, yeah, that's what it reminded me of, so uh, it's very, very, very technologically profound to see that initial goggles, and then we see it, well, around the late 90s, over 2000, looking like that, um, and nowadays, when you go to a 3D movie, or a 3D IMAX movie, uh, you might see glasses that look like this, uh, where there's just a subtle shift in the lenses. This was my first actual experience playing something that had to do with VR. It was VR Pac-Man, and I remember being in Times Square around 1998 or something like that, and going to this arcade in the middle of Times Square, and they had this huge, like it was kind of like a, an MMA ring, where you could go in the middle and then you got basically a set of gauntlets, the goggles, and this long tube that hooked up and then basically you were eating dots. You can see your mouth open and closed. You can see like the garden that you were walking in. You can see the just the tops of the ghosts 
uh, above the maze as you were traveling around. And that really blew me away for a long period of time. Yeah, so it kind of looked like that, except it was much larger. Um, and that's kind of what the screen looked like. So for a while, I was actually going to continue diving into that uh, VR stuff. And I actually played with VRML. Uh, it's hard to see the code here. Uh, but fundamentally, there were technologies in the late 90s that allowed us to implement uh, these kinds of visual graphics that you might see in like a 3D home design tool nowadays. Even though they're probably more sophisticated, I don't do 3D home design. But those were the kind of tools that we were kind of playing around with. And then I went on and did some other stuff, basically Super Side Coding and Flash. And that's when my 3D dreams kind of died, and that's why I have the Terminator arm on the screen. Um, today, back, well, actually around 2016, 2017, I was working with a, a colleague um, at Red Academy, and we uh, started to investigate what was new in VR. And uh, the landscape had changed. And if you're not familiar with uh, VR, there's varying degrees of augmented or virtual reality where maybe you have some simulated objects in a realistic environment, or your whole environment is totally recreated and you're surrounded by it with three uh, aspects to it and sound to it. Uh, this is called the virtual reality spectrum. It's a very common motif that we often talk about in, in VR. So, I want to go back to the basics. Whenever I actually take a look at programming, for example, I always ask myself, is it understandable for my mom? Okay. Can my mom take a look at this code? Is it readable? Does it make sense to her? Because if it makes sense to her, then it will make sense to my colleagues. Of course, I would probably have to optimize it, compress it, and then translate it, or whatever I need to do to get it done. But um, I initially write the code so that the steps are very small and logical, and they make sense. So what I wanted to do here is to illustrate how to implement a basic 360 panorama, whether it be audio, or sorry, just straightforward photo, or you know maybe video if the bandwidth works. Um, and we'll conduct it as an experiment here as a group. So I'm just wondering here, uh, how many of you have already toyed around with these VR goggles? Any kind of VR goggles? A number of you have? So maybe they're like the Google glasses where you might insert your phone and there's like two screens, one for left and one for right. That's a pretty typical example. The way the Re uh, React technology works, and I'll, I'll kind of reiterate it time and time again, is that it will be more totally immersive. It doesn't deal with these two images initially. Okay. So. React VR itself is actually quite a new technology. It was released almost a year ago. Okay. So if you are a new fledgling developer and you are fairly versed in JavaScript and you know a little bit about HTML, maybe you've actually touched React as a, as a programming framework, then VR is at your fingertips. It's not much of a stretch to concoct this kind of video presentation for anything from small marketing to large-scale enterprise type demonstrations. Okay, so there's a lot of implications, uh, there's a lot of ideas that you can take advantage of when you're using uh, VR. So I'm going to go a little bit technical here. When you're setting up your VR development environment, you need this little program called Node. You may have heard of Node or Node.js. Um, it has this little ability, capability to um, take a look at JavaScript and interpret it. And then there's some other things that I will mention briefly, like Homebrew or Yarn, and then the React VR library or CLI, if you want to call it that, and some editing tool. Okay? I'm talking about it as if it's a recipe. And I'll just remind myself and remind you guys that the presentation I will probably distribute uh, to the DevTO folks so that they'll have some link for you so that you can grab it so you can focus on this because I want to move forward to uh, the demo. 
So uh, another question that comes to mind when people start playing around with this is that if I'm familiar with React, like React JS or React Native, can I just simply add React VR? No, not really. You would probably need to work at it at this point as a separate project and provide some sort of link or some sort of form of communication to access that as a separate piece in your application system, whatever your app you're, you're developing. So um, a number of things that I was writing about at the time when I created this slide um, was that the way that it's developed right now when you're using React VR, it's primarily geared to be developed on the Mac. Okay. Although there are um, systems in place, IDEs now in place for Windows, um, especially if you're developing for Oculus, which is primarily for Windows, um, you probably want to use a Mac to work with this particular platform for most of the time. Um, so some hard ingredients, uh, when I was playing around with this, I started with a good hard drink uh, because it was a bit of an experiment. Um, and then you need these equirectangular pictures, okay? And what is an equirectangular picture? I'm going to try, hopefully, okay, maybe you see my screen, no? I'm trying to share my, oh, I have to escape out of the presentation, okay, fair enough. Got to find my mouse, which is also very important. I mean, we're at this point anyway where we're going back to the normal. So I pressed escape and my screen was black. Oh, there. Okay. So hopefully on this left-hand side of the screen, you can see my actual iPhone. Okay. And here is an actual image that was taken with this 360 Samsung Gear video reality camera. And you can get one of these things at Best Buy. I actually got it at Amazon for an amazing deal. I got it for like 89 bucks because it was the last year's model before they got the new one out. And what it does is it captures an image that looks like, uh, if I remember it, it's like one of those Mercator globes or Mercator maps. Does anybody know what a Mercator map is in geography? It was kind of like they took a globe and then they sliced it up into these points so that you can flatten it up in a map, okay? So that's how these types of equirectangular images work, except the computer basically generates the data to fill in in between. So you can see, perhaps on the screen, uh, hey, I got a message too. Uh, you can see here on the screen that the image appears rounded at points, okay? And then it fills in the data along the way because it's capturing the image here on the lens, okay? And right now, I'm actually connected to the screen uh, are acted, uh, connected to the phone and is connected to the camera. And as I said, you need this type of camera. Um, you'll ideally have a headset, although this is viewable on the internet. Um, there are some links to provide some additional development information. I would recommend a site called webbr.rocks to take a look at that. Uh, and maybe an internet browser that supports VR, although as evolution and all this kind of technology evolves, it should work now in most browsers. That's amazing. So I even have a little demo working in Chrome at home. So that was me before React VR, and that was me after I did this research. It was crazy. I just shaved again um, just to get clean for this demo. So you got to grab the gear. And the easy way to use this is to get this thing, and you can actually take advantage of the Google Streets View app, which is what I was trying to show you here on the screen just a moment ago. Okay, so um, I just want to get a quick time check. How much? Five minutes? Okay, maybe I won't have time to do the whole demo, but maybe we'll try to simulate as much as I can, and maybe I'll capture the photo so that we can maybe post it on the DevTO website and 3D panoramic view. So I need a volunteer. Okay, I'm going to pick this lady. Sorry. <laughs> You'll need to stand in the middle here. Hopefully, I'm not going to provide some feedback. And maybe just hold this like this. You just hold it as still as you can. Okay. And what I do with Google Street View is I basically use the camera. Okay. And I'm going to, well, it says I'm in this Googleplex area, but that's okay. Uh, I'm going to attempt to take a picture. So everybody has to stand still. Okay. Or sit still. Okay, for about eight to 10 seconds. Let me give this a try. Let's see how this goes. 
So there was a bee, and it's capturing the photo. You can see that on the screen there. So basically, the, the camera is going around the room. Ah. And that's it. So it captured the photo. Let's see what it looks like on the screen at this point in time. So I'm going to go back. So you can see that, and I'm going to just move it around. Is that cool? Right? So uh, perhaps in the previous, because we might not have time to transfer the photo, but hey, there you go. <laughs> So the idea is that you get the camera to take a picture, right? It's not that hard. Then what? You need to transfer this photo over to your computer, okay? So there's a way to do it, and I think I could just, can I do the slideshow thing again? Let's see, play from current slide. And then I'll try to show you a little bit of code. Hopefully, ah, that's good. So. Uh, I had some settings set up to capture the camera from my phone, and then what you fundamentally need to do is just airdrop it. Uh, so I have like the save image from the Street View uh, app to my phone. So then it's stored there, or, well, I have to take it to my computer so I can airdrop it to the computer. Fair enough? Okay. So once I transfer it to my computer, okay, let me just show you my IDE. So I just happen to use uh, WebStorm, the IntelliJ group of software. I happen to like it. Oh, I forgot I had this. This is so good. It's so transparent. Um, and you need to install the React VR CLI. So you just type it in the terminal. And then you initialize this application by saying React VR some app. Okay. And I'm going to kind of point out the important directories that you need to know. There is a directory there that you may or may not see called static assets, and it's there where you place that final image. Okay. And then you just edit the existing index.vr.js code. So uh, maybe those of you in the back might not be able to fully see it, uh, so I'll kind of verbalize it. But basically, with React, you can import a number of types of objects that you want to play around with. And with React VR, you get this uh, subset of objects. And one of them happens to be called Pano, for panoramic window, if you want it. And it's inside a view tag. And a view tag in React is basically a container that contains whatever you want to see. And then inside there, you set the source of the panel to point to that particular photo. Okay. By default, there's a native chess image that you can play around with. Um, but then, this is where the power lies. You got all of React basically available to you. So in the basic example, there's a text field that you can add and overlay it on top. Okay. Then you can stylize it. And then, in a successive example, which by the way, not only do I have the PowerPoint slides, but there is a GitHub repo whose branches represent each of the examples that I'm talking about from beginning to end. So you can even add state. If you're familiar with React and coding, there's this concept called state, which says, hey, I have a bunch of values that might change and it might impact the way the components display their values at the end of the day. So we can influence whatever kind of object, like text fields, and they can change state on top of your VR, or they can influence what part to play if it's a video, okay? Um, or maybe go to some or video, whatever. You can control it at the end of the day, okay? So it's more than just posting content that is video uh, and panoramic on Facebook, or photo that's panoramic on Facebook, because that's probably where you've seen a lot of this content, but now you can post it on your own websites at the end of the day. There's a process to build, and once you build, there's a folder that gets created, and you simply copy the assets over with a little modification of code at the end of the day. Okay. So let me try, well, I'm here somewhere. 
I'll just show you the basic chess example. I think it's already loaded here. And I think it's already running. Okay. So I give it a moment because, as I said, this is like my mom's computer, basically. It's a four gigabyte RAM MacBook Pro, or MacBook Air, and it's pretty slow to run this stuff. So I'm waiting to see what happens if anything. Oh, wait, you know what? I haven't actually started yet. Maybe I should. Oh, no, I got a little bit of an error. Anyway, just like a cooking show, I get a little prepared. So I got something out of the oven already here. Let me see if I can pop that up. <laughs> now, it's going to be a little bit slow, but you can see this, was, uh, a, this is the end of the video that I took at Ribfest last year. So I walked around with my camera, and I had my family with me somewhere. Oh, popped up my previous browser. Let's just go there. So you can probably see my hand. There's my lovely wife, and underneath my arm is my, my daughter. Uh, there's my nose. Um, but you also saw some text there that said Ribfest text, right? And it's not so far of a stretch as well to eventually uh, add actions or events. Oh, there it is. So this is off my own website. This is React VR. It is JavaScript fundamentally that you're writing some code with some assets that you can take from a little camera and a phone, and then you can publish it on, the, on your own. Any questions? Okay, it does have like this full, like, even though my computer, you can probably hear my computer fan, it's, it's like going to explode. But yeah, it does have that full rotation capability. And uh, I have a version of it running in my glasses, so if you have some time after you want to try it out in the glasses, hopefully it's calibrated so that you can take a look at it. Okay. So that's the demo. And I think I forward it to the very end of my presentation. So as I said, um, my presentation will have some resources that you want to take a look at. Oh, see, my computer's about to file. Let's see. On current slide. Let's see if this will work. And three, two, no. So that's all I have to present. <laughs> oh, there it goes. So I talked a little bit about the code. And as I said, there's some discussion on it as well as some links in here. Um, some things you might want to explore before you explore React VR 3JS. Okay. It's part of the foundation of uh, code for, for React VR. The website Red VR rocks, very cool. Uh, some information, uh, infor information rather on the facebook.github.io website on React VR is also valuable for you. And my email address is my name, ed at edapostle.com. You can also follow me at Twitter at Edward J. Apostle. Okay. And as I said, this presentation as well as the link to the GitHub repository that contains all the branches with each successive example from the beginning to the VR video demo uh, will be made available to folks at their team. Thank you. Sorry, you can. Oh, it is. Yeah, you saw the Ribfest photo uh, video. Um, I, I also went to that giant rubber duck thing this past summer. Uh, I went to the X with it. Uh, made a number of sam uh, sample videos just to kind of explore its capabilities. One thing that I did not mention, if you're going to do video, you're going to have to take the source and put it into your computer. It will be some sort of MP4 file, but you need to convert it. Uh, and I believe the tool that I used to convert it was called Movie 360. It's M-U-V-E-E -E 360. And that converts it to the format that can be read by React VR so that it can play, play it and control it properly. Yes? Let's say I was the Yeah? Yeah, frame rates. Um, the newer cameras definitely have a higher frame rate and they all support 4K, so if you really want that vomiting effect, um, <laughs> definitely 
this camera won't be able to, it will be a little bit jarring, but the newer cameras definitely support it. Uh, the stability factor depends on the chases that you're, you're, you're carrying it on. Um, I am not sure whether there are gim uh, gimbals, gimbals for balancing. I'm supposing in the entertainment industry there are. Um, as I said, this is like a hobbyist kind of thing, like investing in cryptocurrency is also a hobby one. Uh, <laughs> but um, definitely, I, I would say it's within the realm of possibility to grab the latest Samsung Gear VR with the 4K thing, hook it up to some GoPro compatible uh, shoulder strap, and then go have fun with that at Wonderland. Scott. So everyone's familiar with uh, Google Stadia, right? Yes. Yeah. Was a pioneer of that type, type of technology. Yeah. What do you think is next in terms of something ubiquitous that everyone knows and everyone uses uh, that heavily involves VR? Other than movies and sports events, those are two that come to my mind right, right now. Um, you may notice that at the, uh, are they still called the Scotia Bank Theater? God, it's been a while. Yeah. yeah. So they have that big VR push. They have that arcade at the lower level where it used to be the admission ticket booths. Now it's replaced by this whole VR holodeck thing. That's what they did. That's what they did. And for 12 bucks, you, it's basically a dollar a minute, you can basically entertain yourself with the same kind of technology that you can build with. Except it's a little bit more higher end. Um, in my, my more advanced investigations, I've explored the PlayStation VR. As a it's a beautiful device. It's amazing. It's so much fun. Um, it doesn't quite work with React VR, but I use the same learning strategies that I did to master React VR in order to learn how to use PlayStation uh, VR and play around with that as well. Any other questions? I was going to say, Scott, that uh, event and conferencing technology. When you're at a well, when you can't make a conference and or you have to be at a speaking type session and you can't physically be there, then don your goggles, have a live stream, and then just sit there and look at the whole room in 360 degrees at the leisure of your own desk. Thank you.